right, what's up guys? Welcome back to an episode of Donation Off-Road. So today we're bringing you another episode of Mastering the Tacoma and today we're talking about lockers. Specifically, the ARB front locker that we recently installed on our 2017 Toyota Tacoma. Now, before the comment section explodes, let me get this out of the way. This is not the Tacoma behind me. This is my 96 Honda Civic EK or whatever the hell it is. It's a beast. The Tacoma's not here right now, so I don't have it available for, you know, a backdrop for filming, so... Bear, just bear with me. Don't be mad. Anyways, as I said, we just recently installed the ARB front locker for our Toyota Tacoma, and we're going to be doing a review of that today. Now, as always, we're doing a review from the perspective of a Toyota Tacoma owner, but this information can be good for anybody that's looking to install lockers on their vehicle. Also, along with the locker, we'll also be doing a quick review of the ARB single compressor high output thing mabobber that we installed as well so let's get to it starting with the installation process pretty straightforward now the locker itself obviously i didn't install that i'll link the video below of how we got that done we ended up going to flatline customs in temple city they took good care of us out there so if you're interested in doing the same check out their instagram we'll link that below as well as for mounting and wiring the compressor it was fairly easy everything you need comes inside the box although i'll say make sure to read the directions thoroughly or watch a video of the install because walking into it blindly can be a little bit confusing and also before the installation there's a couple things that i would definitely upgrade just to make your process a little bit better and make your complete system a little bit stronger first off is the mount that comes with it if there's a company that makes a specific mount for the arb compressor for your vehicle i would recommend buying that before you install it i use the generic one that comes in the box which yeah it works fine but I want something a little bit more secure, so I'm gonna be upgrading in the future. So if you can do it now, do it now. Also, I'd highly recommend upgrading the airline that comes with the locker. The problem with that line is because it's made of plastic, it's easily gonna get ripped or torn or melted by the heat of the engine. There's a lot of problems that can come because of it. I opted to upgrade to a braided steel line, which I got from an aircraft supply store. They custom made it for me. I went in there, told them exactly what I needed, the fittings and everything like that. They took good care of me. It's gonna cost a little bit of money, probably like 80 bucks, 100 bucks, but it's 100% worth it because it's gonna reinforce your entire air system to where down the lines, you're gonna have a lot less issues. Lastly, the switches provided by ARB, which they work just fine. I'm using them right now. I'll drop a photo right here of how disgusting it looks looks next to my AC vent. They work just fine, but I would upgrade to something else. Get yourself an S-Pod or get yourself, I got this cheap Amazon one here that I'm going to be reviewing pretty soon. So stay forward to this. You know, this allows me to have like a, a scent, you know, a hub, plug all your stuff in, you run one wire inside the dash, and then now you have, you know, all your switches right there. As for reviewing the compressor itself, it works as advertised. I mean, that's quite as simple, you know, no leaks, no fails, nothing, no real issues. The only thing that I'm concerned about or taking a look at is long-term durability because I do use it for the locker as well as I use it to air up my tires as well as other people's tires. So we'll see how it does long-term, but for now, the compressor is doing just fine. Air up times, I found it to be less than four minutes or so per tire uh, going from like 15 psi to around 35 40 psi that's a lot faster than you're going to get with these little air compressors like i used to have the viair 88p which is a good a good air compressor but it just takes a long time this is a lot faster and you don't have to you, you can work it hard and it's not going to overheat so quickly and everything like that these are pretty good. So, so far so good with the compressor. No real complaints from me. Uh, works just fine, works as advertised as I said. Um, just look forward to long-term durability testing and we'll see how it goes from there. All right, getting into the locker review itself. Now, since installing the front locker on this truck, we've gotten pretty aggressive with the trails that we run. I mean, rightfully so, right? You you put in, you do an install like this, you wanna test the limits of your vehicle. You wanna see how far can it go, how long can it go, what can it do, and everything in between. So harder lines, harder trails, all that fun stuff. That's what we've been doing. Along with our front locker, we also installed 529 gears. And I recommend to everybody, if you guys are gonna, you know, install a locker or anything like that, look at, you know, doing the gears too, just because you already have it taken apart, save yourself some time, save yourself some labor, save yourself some money in the long run by doing it all together. That's what I opted to do. Honestly, I was just gonna do the gears and not do the locker. I'm really glad I did both together because I saved money in the long run. I was gonna do the locker eventually and I did it all together. Good, good choice, Dustin. 
good job. Now for off-roading with a front locker. Paired with the stock electronic rear locker, a front locker opens up a whole new level of potential with the Tacoma. The word that comes to mind for me is comfort. Comfort in the sense that trails and obstacles that you've previously done now seem to be a lot easier. There's a peace of mind when being fully locked that makes you feel like you can do almost anything. Now don't get me wrong, it doesn't make you unstoppable. I've failed many obstacles since locking the front, but at the same time, I'm always willing to try the hard line. I'm always willing to try new things because of the comfort that comes with the front locker. The perfect example to me is Dishpan. Now Dishpan, the gatekeeper has three different lines. There's the middle one, which is the easier one. You have the left line, which is like the semi hard line, or if you're really skinny, and then you have the right side, which is the hardest line. The first time we went to Dishpan, I tried the center line. I did it just fine and that's all good and fun. That's what I'd normally do with just a rear locker. But then when I came back later, I tried the hardest line available to me. I didn't make it, which is fine, but I almost made it. And my issue wasn't with traction, it was more with clearance. I, I just wasn't tall enough to, to crawl the obstacle. But the point is, front lockers gave me comfort to try new lines, try new things, try something a little bit harder. Now, lockers aren't gonna be good in every situation. If you're doing something that requires you to bump it or hit it with some speed, turn that locker off. Trust me, just turn it off because bumping it with a front locker especially with IFS, you're bound to break something. I've seen it a hundred times, you break a CV axle, you break a tie rod. Those are the things that happen when you bump it with a front locker. Turn that sucker off if you're gonna gas it. Front lockers also make it very difficult to turn your wheel. So if you're going downhill or you're in a situation that requires a little bit of nimble turning or precise turning, also you're gonna wanna turn off that locker. Other than that, a locker will simplify your off-road experience and make it actually boring in some cases which is why i don't recommend that you rely on your lockers too heavily because it can water down your off-road experience sometimes it's fun to struggle it's fun to teach yourself better lines so don't always turn that locker on don't rely on it too heavily a front locker should be used as a last resort with whatever you're doing try it first with just four low maybe turn on your rear locker and you're going to find that in 90 percent of situations you're going to make it just like that the front locker is for those 10% of obstacles where you need traction on all four tires. A front locker isn't mandatory on every vehicle. It's for those people that know they're gonna hit very, very difficult trails and they need that kind of reliability. So I wouldn't recommend going out of your way just to install a front locker on your vehicle, but like a lot of things, if you're already taking it apart to do gears or to fix something, then sure, get that locker, save the money, and put it in there right now. Otherwise, become a pro with what you got and upgrade as you need to. That's all I got for the video. Um, I'll wrap up by saying that I am very pleased with the ARB compressor and air locker combination. These are pretty great tools to upgrade your vehicle to the next level. Look forward to the next Mastering the Tacoma video when we go over front lockers, versus MTS versus crawl control. Should be a good time. That's all I got for the video. I wanna thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe channels, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Patreon. You can also hit us up for shirts at donationoffroad at gmail.com. But other than that, thank you guys. We'll see you again next time. <laughs>